Welcome this evening to the U.S. Wrestling Foundation Victory Tour. Can we get up for the U.S. Wrestling Foundation first and foremost? What a great night we've got in store. This event kicks off our journey to garner our nation's commitment to help raise America's greatest generation. Life is hard and wrestling prepares the way for the challenge. My name is Dan Russell and, and we have an incredible evening together tonight. I'm so glad that you're here. We chose this victory tour. We chose this victory tour to be launched right here at this historic location. One Constitution Ave Northeast. The spirit of wrestling, I think, is epitomized well in the picture that was taken in the 2012 Olympic Games. I'm sure that you remember this picture. Jordan Burroughs, arm in arm, with Gadarzi of Iran. You know, wrestling breaks down barriers. Wrestling breaks down walls. And it builds respect. And it builds honor. And our sport brings nations together. This time last week, I was in Algeria in the refugee camps of the Sahrawi people. Over 190,000 people that have spent 41 years in refugee camps. What I discovered about these people is they are one of the oldest, most ancient wrestling civilizations on the planet. I spent two decades doing wrestling camps for thousands of wrestlers where I've talked about the tombs of Beni Hassan, where you've got hieroglyphs that have been put on these cave walls back in the 11th and 12th dynasty, over 4,000 years ago. Wrestling techniques we still teach today. And over the last uh, 41 years, as they've struggled in exile, they're losing their historic wrestling roots. I think it's come at a high cost, and youth today in these camps are being recruited to radical extremist ideologies, forgetting the distinctive qualities and character traits that wrestling has embedded for generations in the Sahrawi culture. And I think as a wrestling family, we can't allow that to happen. Our own youth are being misled into the belief that everyone deserves a trophy. Our culture instills the myth that you're entitled to success. In fact, one multi-million dollar ad campaign begins with these questions. Who are you not to be great? Who are you to be ordinary? Who are you to deny greatness? Greatness awaits. Our kids are being encouraged to find their success, to find their greatness in their online identity. But we don't live in a virtual world. We live in a real world. And there's never been a time, I believe, more important in history than the time in which we live where wrestling is more important than it is now. Our culture, our community needs wrestling now more than ever. The things that wrestling teaches. Listen, everyone wrestles. If you're on this side of eternity, you're in a wrestling match. Life is a fight. And the things that this sport teaches, the values, the skills necessary to face the challenges that life presents. We live in a demanding world. And I think wrestling embodies a rich history of developing great leaders that are, not, that are able to face extraordinary opposition. Champions are not born. Champions are made through hard work, through blood, sweat, and tears. When growing through hardship, there are traits such as decisiveness, and courage, endurance, resilience, fairness, good judgment, among many others that this great sport develops. Ancient wisdom says this, no discipline seems pleasant at the time. It's painful. But afterward, there's a great return for those who are trained in this way. I want to introduce tonight two great champions in the real world. Can we welcome our two Olympic gold medalists, Kyle Snyder and Helen Marulis. Now, 
I know all of you know this, but Kyle, one year before the Olympics, you became the youngest American in U.S. history ever to be a world champion. And this summer, he became the youngest American in U.S. history ever to win an Olympic gold medal. And then Helen Morales, until Rio, no American had ever won an Olympic gold medal. Helen Morales had to face Yoshida for the gold, the most highly decorated athlete in freestyle wrestling history, with three Olympic gold medals to her name, with 13 world gold medals to her name. That's what Helen faced, and she won four to one. Becoming the very first Olympic gold medalist in U.S. history for our women's wrestling program. What I love about these two is not only are they great wrestlers, but they represent our sport so well. And I know that there are young people all over this country now that have a wrestling dream that's been birthed in them because of the leadership of these two, both on and off the mat. So I want to ask them a few questions. I want to hear first, how did you get started in the sport of wrestling? Yeah, so I started wrestling when I was uh, five years old. So my parents basically told me that the reason why I started wrestling was because I was a real aggressive kid. And I got an older brother, a younger brother, and a younger sister. And we would spend a lot of time in the house beating each other up. Little sister was involved too. We didn't uh, exclude her from the fights. But, so I was a real aggressive kid. My parents got tired of us wrestling on the sofas and um, messing up the furniture. So they said, you should go wrestle in a room. And now I wrestle still. My older brother wrestled at West Point and my little brother um, wrestles at Ohio State with me. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so my name's Helen. Um, I started wrestling when I was seven years old. Um, before that, I did ballet, gymnastics, diving, and um, I, the instructors actually asked my mom not to bring me back because <laughs> I was really shy and insecure, and I would just shut down and cry. And so, um, you know, my little brother had just joined wrestling, and there weren't enough kids in the room, and my mom just, you know, brought me along. We didn't have a babysitter, and she didn't want to make my brother quit, so one day she just told me to take my shoes off, jump in there, and be his dummy. And after two weeks of, you know, push-ups and sprints and, you know, getting thrown by my brother, uh, I went to my parents and I told my dad, you know, hey, this isn't fair. I'm doing what the boys are doing, but they get to compete and I don't. So not taking me seriously, my dad made a bet with me that if I won my first match, I could continue wrestling. And that was the only match I won all year. <laughs> so, so I call it fate. As I get older, I feel like I learn even more about the things that wrestling has taught me. I think, number one... The thing that I always say helps me uh, do the, achieve the things that I've achieved and helps me in my personal life and my you know career goals is just consistency. I think the sport has taught me that you know if you want to be successful, if you want to be long, longevity of success, uh, you have to be consistent not only in the room when you're practicing, but also in your personal life, being nice to people trying to be kind and help other people out and your academics as well um, are all really important because if you got all that in check, it makes it a lot easier to just go in there and train. And I think that wrestling has just surrounded me with such great individuals that it's almost impossible not to kind of follow their lead and learn from what they, what they do just by their actions and by what they can teach you and it's really special because it's not like, you know, other sports where the, the best athletes, you don't, you never get to meet them in wrestling. It's like you go to a camp, you get to meet your hero and learn from them. And uh, that's a great thing wrestling does. What I love about wrestling is um, really what it teaches you about yourself. It's this organized, you know, this safe space where you can just kind of just confront every little thing about yourself, your failures, your weaknesses, your strengths. And um, it, it's truly an incredible sport. It's, it's changed my life. It's, um, you know, I, I give wrestling just the sport credit for teaching me about self-confidence, discipline, hard work. But I think for me, what distinguishes wrestling from other sports is 
um, how humbling um, and unforgiving it is. So, I mean, you can be winning 9-0 and three seconds left, you can get thrown on your back and pinned. Whereas in basketball, if you're winning 9-0 with three seconds left, there's, you know, there's no chance. Um, but I think some of those things, they, uh, they become tools for leadership because you just, you know, you realize that you have to show up every day and, and leadership isn't really always about the things you say, but, but what you do. And with wrestling, it does, doesn't matter what you say, it really doesn't matter what your record is, you know, what, what you're ranked, anything. I mean, that gives you nothing when you step on the mat. And so I think that's been a very valuable tool that I've learned. Um, I have a gold medal, that's great. <laughs> that, that doesn't give me an edge, doesn't give me, you know, a, a few more points on the next match that I wrestle. I'm starting 0-0 with that girl. And we're stepping onto the same mat and we're both wearing a singlet and we're both wearing shoes and there's gonna be a ref for both of us and that's it. So I think that tool in itself has been very good for me because it keeps me humble and, it, and it's taught me to, to stay hungry. Um, and I just, it's been very, very beneficial for me. I know you know what it takes to become a champion in the sport of wrestling. That's a very difficult, difficult task. We have two great champions here and I think it would be appropriate for us to get on our feet and give these two a rousing round of applause. Our Olympic gold medalists. In the seventh grade, Ben discovered wrestling when his school was recruiting wrestlers for the team. He discovered wrestling in one of the toughest states for wrestling, Pennsylvania. And Ben thought that wrestling may be the sport in which he could make his mark. I want you to listen to a little bit of Ben's story right here on the video. I think in life, people wait for challenges to come to them. But when you're born with a challenge, you learn how to overcome that from day one. Please welcome Ben Jackson. Thank you to the USWF for having me come speak. That video took about six years to make when I first had this idea of working with the company Gatorade. I was a small kid in Pennsylvania with no connections to the mainstream media. My only connection was Facebook. So I remember First year I went to college, I said to my parents, I'm gonna make this work and I'm gonna be seen around the world. And there is no option B, only option A. There was no um, other goal of mine that I saw myself doing. I was born with cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy affects me from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep. Every single morning, the simplest of tasks are hard for me. Brushing my teeth, washing my hands, putting on my shoes, making breakfast. But yeah, day after day, I wake up and I meet the challenge. When I was in seventh grade, I discovered the sport of wrestling. Of course, since I was so young, I walked into the room, and the only wrestling I knew was WWE wrestling. <laughs> so I walk in, and I'm looking for the ropes, and I'm looking for the high bar so I could jump. <laughs> and then hit that on one, two, three count, and then have my hands raised. I still discovered there was something a lot different. And when I first got to the wrestling room, 
the coach was honest. He said, I don't know what we're going to do with you, but if you keep coming back, we'll make this work. All day on my back. It was horrible. I went home, told my parents how horrible it was. But I'm going to show it tomorrow because I know they think they saw the last of me. So I showed up and they were like, oh, you're back. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Pinned again all day, every day. It was um, a crucial time for my mental toughness because mental toughness is what gets me through every single day. So my mental advantage on everybody else in the wrestling room and quite frankly, everybody else in the state of Pennsylvania was I knew they didn't have to suffer every single 24 hours like I had to. So I would go home, come back. I finally made the junior varsity team and there were a lot of overclassmen on the team and I had to walk into the room if like I've been doing this for all my life because I knew that they were going to see my respect and they were going to see the worst ethic and even though I walked with a limp and ran with a limp. I knew in the back of their mind they didn't want to lose to the guy in the race with a limp. So I would challenge them every single day. We're going to keep going until I win. The physical was never there for me. Leaders sometimes aren't the one up on the mountaintop. I recognize that I could motivate a group of guys to get to the mountaintop, even though they don't believe in themselves. One match at a time. Win this first match. Win the second match. Get back to square one. Six months later, I'm speaking to a sold out arena at the Prudential Center in New York, New Jersey. Two months after that, I'm speaking at Rutgers University to 700 Division One athletes. Two months after that, I'm at the Giants training camp. Oh, they're back on Victor Cruz, Eli Manning. <laughs> Nobody's off limits. Complete experience. So I come home and I say, Ben. All right, like now, that's a little, um, much to handle, but you're only 21, 22 at the time, and we have to continue to grow, continue to grow. And I speak at a middle school in New Jersey, and then a wrestling camp, and now that same kid from the Poconos who had that vision and no connections is speaking around the corner from the White House. The sport of wrestling has so many overcoming how to overcome challenges. But every once in a while he goes out like tonight and speaks to the entire world. That's 
inspire the next generation. And that's why I wrestle. Thank you very much. I want to uh, introduce now a rancher, a businessman, and a wrestler. An Oklahoma High School graduate, a wrestler at Missouri Valley College. And in 2016, this year, the Wrestling Hall of Fame recognized him as an outstanding American. Mullen is one of only two Native Americans serving in the U.S. House of Representatives. His work in the House has earned him numerous legislative awards. Can we please welcome Mark Wayne Mullen. Hey, uh, guys, thank you so much for your support uh, of, a, of a sport that I've just grown to love. Uh, have we, uh, one thing we've heard tonight over and over again is, is wrestling is, is more than a sport. It's a life lesson. It, it, it's determination. Um, I, I'm the proud, uh, proud uh, father of five just wonderful kids. And in my family, you have two choices about wrestling. What are they, boys? You wrestle and like it or wrestle and don't like it. Uh, that's your options. And, and, and listen, it's not because I'm being that parent. I'm not, I'm not trying to live my life through my kids. Uh, my wife, she mistakes my determination as being thick-headed. Uh, she's been married to me 19 years, and I can assure you no one else would put up with me but her. It, there, it's not going to happen. But, but it's not, it, it's not, it, it's not thick-headedness. It is determination of this. No one's going to tell me I can't do something. Because when you grow up on a wrestling mat, as you, as you heard from the other people that's been up here, you learn how to deal with successes and failure. That is life. Very few wrestlers are going to make it big. And there isn't a wrestler that's in a wrestling room in college or in high school that thinks I'm going to make millions doing this sport. But it's the self-determination. It's what's inside of it. It's that foundation that is built that says, hey, when I have success today, I'll only get it and enjoy it long enough to get this done. And then I got to set the new, new goal. I can't remember that many names of the wrestlers I beat, but I can name every one that beat me. It sticks in your head and it drives you the next day. And I used to say, I may not be the most talented person in the room, but if you let me go to second period with you, we're going to be even because I know I outworked you. And by the time we get to the third period, I'm going to mentally break you and I will win. If you let me stick around that long, I will come out on top. That's life. Life is tough. Life is not going to be everything that we portray it to be. We are raising kids sometimes thinking that, hey, it's okay. Coach didn't like you. It's okay to quit. No, it's not okay to quit. When you quit, it becomes a habit. And you would succeed, it becomes a habit. Starting is the easiest part of anything you do. It might be the most uncomfortable thing you do, but it's the easiest thing. But successful people have a habit of always finishing. No matter what, you're going to finish. No matter what, you're going to see it to the end. I was six years old, and I, I, I'm, I'm the youngest of seven, and man, wherever Kyle went to, I got the dog beat out of me. And the two oldest ones were, my, or the two closest ones to me were my sisters. That's very humiliating. When I was, when I was, when I was six years old, I'm on a mat, and I, I grew up wrestling or watching my older brothers. And, and I never wanted to quit, and my dad just, he never let you have that excuse of quitting. I mean, if you quit, oh my goodness, it was, woo. And I'm on the mat, and this kid grabs me in a headlock, and he throws me on my back, and I thought, he's going to kill me. I'm going to die. How do I get out of this? I got an idea, pin myself. I succeeded. I kicked, I squirmed, and I got my shoulders on the mat, and I got off the mat. And I walked over there, and guess who's waiting for me? It's my dad. And I thought, oh, my Lord, he's going to kill me. And he puts his hands on my shoulders, and I was like, goodbye, world. He puts his hands on my shoulders. And he says, son, don't you worry about it. You fought to the end. He thought, <laughs> he thought I was fighting to get off my back. 
he didn't know I was fighting to lose. And I remember going back to the house that night. I laid down on my bunk bed and I remember having that sick, that sickness in my stomach. That sickness, that ball that was in my stomach. And I thought, I would rather die and have my head cut off and set beside the mat before I ever gave up again. Not only did I quit, but I lied to my dad. We sometimes do our kids a disservice by allowing them to quit. We don't allow them to get that determination. And, that, and that's what the sport of wrestling creates. It creates that foundation to succeed in life. When you can learn to be successful in a competitive wrestling room, and I say that by learning to be successful because when you walk into a, comp a competitive wrestling room your first day, we were talking about this to the gentleman at my table, you get your nose broke every day. You're getting it shoved in the mat. You're having a piece of humble pie day in and day out. And every time you think you've achieved success, you're moving on to another level. And you start that process all over again. You go from elementary to a junior high room. And you go from a junior high room to a high school room. And you go from a high school room to a college room. And you go from a college room to Olympic Training Center. And each time you've had to learn how to be successful. Isn't that what life is about? Isn't that what life is all about? I mean, each time you get to a point, there's no such thing as being comfortable in life. When you start coasting, you start dying. You've got to learn to step outside that comfort zone. And that's where you find comfort then because you know you're pushing yourself. And without even knowing it, wrestling builds that foundation inside of young men and young women. So thank you and God bless. You know, the United States Wrestling Hall of Fame underscores the relationship between the military and the sport of wrestling. From President Theodore Roosevelt, who helped bring wrestling to the military academies, to David Buddy Arndt, who won an NCAA championship before and after World War II, to Major General Kenneth C. Luer, the father of the modern U.S. Army Rangers, to Marine Doug Zembeck, the Lion of Fallujah, two-time NCAA All-American. Wrestling has influenced and helped our military. The National Wrestling Hall of Fame has 56 distinguished members, 13 outstanding Americans, and two Medal of Courage recipients who have wrestled and served our country. Service is a gift that we give to the world. Serving our country is part of serving humanity. Some of the greatest leaders that I've ever worked with have been developed and trained in our military. And 30% of our special forces wrestled. Tonight we close with hearing from our 37th Commandant of the United States Marine Corps, General Robert Yay. So I'm a little nervous. I mean, what's a, I mean, I grew up in Michigan. Don Beam was the high school wrestling coach in my high school. And we had a really good team. Jeff Callard was on our team, and we had the Bartlett brothers, and I knew the Glass Twins. And I wasn't on the team because I was just a fish they beat the crap out of up in there. But, I, you know, when you're in Michigan and winter comes, you, you're in gym class, you wrestle. When you go to high school, you're in gym class, you wrestle. And it's kind of like what the congressman said, you know, you can like it or you don't like it, but you're in gym class and you're going to wrestle. And you get weighed in and you wrestle and, and sometimes you're looking at these lights and sometimes you're on top and it's just the way it is. You don't always win, but, you know, sometimes you get hurt and you get beat up. Sometimes you win. But uh, I'm here to represent another part of that real world, uh, the military. So on behalf of our chairman, uh, Joe Dunford, uh, Chief of Staff of the Army, Mark Milley, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, uh, uh, Dave Goldfein, and uh, CNO of the Navy, uh, John Richardson, thanks for having this. Why are the Marines here? Um, the guy that runs our recruiting, uh, Paul Kennedy, came up. He goes, you know, we, we got to go out there. First of all, we got to find ourselves some kick-ass women that come into Marine Corps. So I was talking to Helen.
and some some more guys because I started thinking about all the people I know in the Marine Corps who wrestle or have wrestled. And then I, I started, you know, Doug Zimbeck, John, John Sattler, uh, Jim Minnick, uh, Brett Bourne, uh, uh, the Gray Brothers. I mean, I go on and on and on and on. And in Marine Corps recruit training, we have martial arts. We fight. We fight because for the same reasons the congressman said, and as you said, because young people today, they're not used to getting hit in the face. And when you come into Marine Corps, it's kind of like wrestling. You know, we're, we're a team, we build teams, but I ain't carrying your pack. That's your gear. You ruck your gear. And, you know, we got to carry cruiser weapons. You know, okay, I'll help you. But, I, you know, if you're hurt, you know, I'll, I'll maybe help you carry some of your stuff. But I'm expected to carry my weight. I'm supposed to fight my fight as part of that team. So as we started to look at partnerships and who would we want to partner with to help us find the best of the best and the young people in the United States, we said, well, what about wrestlers? I mean, what is it? I mean, they're resilient, they're strong, they're fit, they're disciplined, they're, they understand how to overcome adversity, they never quit, it's just tough. Sounds like Marine Corps. So why don't we go talk to these folks and see if we can't work something out. But I would ask you, not just for Marines, but soldiers, sailor, and airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen. My son got married here on the 1st of October, and I was talking to the, his, his, uh, his wife, now his wife's family, and I go, you know, if you're ever laying in bed at night and you're worried that there's, like, really rough people out there staying up all night doing stuff to bad people that want to hurt you, if you really wonder if they're out there, don't worry about them. They're out there. They're out there. And it's, it's my honor to, to serve with them and uh, to watch them do what they do, like these young Marines in here. Um, so I kind of feel like I'm, uh, I'm here with a bunch of people. Uh, I'm not a wrestler. My brother wrestled at Navy. Uh, he's still one of the fittest guys I know because he has that same work ethic. You know, he's just constantly training and working hard, and I'm just trying to keep up with him. But uh, it's an honor to meet so many distinguished athletes and our gold medal winners. Thank you so much. You made us all proud watching it on TV and standing there on the podium. Again, it's an honor and privilege to be here with all of you and to meet so many great champions and Olympians. The Marine Corps looks forward to the relationship with the USA Wrestling and all that we can do together. Thank you so much for supporting the military and, and all that you do uh, on behalf of the nation. Thank you very much. Semper Fidelis. Uh, we are in this together. It's a mountain we're going to climb. And boy, uh, the view is going to be great, but it's not going to stop us from keep climbing the next hill and the next hill and the next hill. And uh, we wrestle. Whether we like it or not, we wrestle because life is a wrestling match. Life's a struggle. Life's hard. But wrestling prepares you for the battle. Have a great night. Thank you.